walking, everybody. The classic intro music. <laughs> a little fun there. All right. <laughs> In all seriousness, welcome to the inaugural Tech Talk, episode one of the Lakeshore Fab Labs online content. I am Chris Kaminsky, your host, uh, manager of the Lakeshore Fab Lab, if we could be in person. That beautiful facility you see right behind me. And today we're going to talk about Tesla's and toilet paper with our guest, Carl Bloss, fellow Lakeshore Fab Lab member. Hey, how's everybody doing? All right, you want me to take it from here? Yeah, man, introduce yourself. How'd you okay. get started at the Fab Lab? The origin story of Carl, right? <laughs> okay, sounds good. All right, my name's Carl Bloss. Um, I'm a retired chemical engineer, live downtown Muskegon, and uh, I love to tinker. And yeah, I stumbled across the Fab Lab. I'm also an MCC student, taking some classes in electricity. So I walked by the Fab Lab every day um, to my classes. So I thought I'd check it out, met Chris. And uh, one of the first things I did was, um, yeah, I joined um, and uh, then took some of the classes. There are some short courses available. I took one in the laser wood cutting uh, with Daniel Snow, who's here as well. And uh, so I got to do some fun stuff, like uh, make some Christmas ornaments. So I handed those all out to friends and then uh, you know, this, I'm an electric vehicle guy, so I made some dash plaques for a show, which unfortunately now had to be canceled. So, and then I got into 3D printing, and and at first, uh, so let me share my uh, couple of slides here. I can do this. Here we go. Um, yeah. So yeah, the the laser wood cutting. I uh, did some sticker design, of course, EV stuff, you know, hey, you like buying gas? Um, and then um, then got into the added, additive manufacturing. And what typically everybody does is you start out with, with some uh, pre-printed designs and, you know, you download some files, you put them on the 3D printer and, um, and you print them out and you've got some really fun Yodas or whatever. And then, and then the question is, what's what's next after that? And so for me, um, I went on a site called Thingiverse, and we'll provide some links to that later. And you can download designs. And one of them was a was a cup holder for a Tesla Model S. So I happen to have a Tesla, and of all of the oversights, lo and behold, there's no there's no cup holder in the back of the Tesla. So so then. Um, and here's the here's the, the cup holder now. But what I did is I went on this site called Thingiverse, and I'll bring it up here. Um, you should have tweeted Elon Musk and be like, "Yeah, come on, come on, dude! I printed this cup holder for like fifty cents." Yeah. <laughs> so, so for example, um, this is kind of what the the cup holder itself looks like. Um, but the the issue is really how to how to mount it. And of course, now it's not coming up. Here we go. So now you can rotate it. That's what the cup holder itself looks like. But the real issue is how do you mount it? And so somebody came up with this clever design where you mount it into the armrests, and then there are some pieces that go underneath the armrest, and and then you put it all together. And in a little bit, I'm going to walk out to my garage and actually show you what it looks like. But this is more or less what it looks like. This is from the viewpoint of the rear seat. So this thing up here, the armrests. So this, there's a piece that slides underneath here. There's a piece that slides on the other side. You have this whole surface area. And then those cup holders drop in there. It was all great. I put it all together. And, and then I got my trusty water bottle and I tried to put it in there and it didn't fit. And that really irritated me because the 3D print takes like hours to print. So I thought, well, this is for the birds. So, so then what I did is I took the original design and modified it. And then I found that if I changed it just a little bit, um, and actually I started with the new design, and now my water bottle fits in there. Okay. Um, so that was kind of the next, 
the next evolution of taking a design and modifying it slightly. Um, awesome. Did so you ever? Then, sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. yeah did you go ever ahead. have any failed prints? Because absolutely. Was, okay, I was going to say. Um, I've got. I didn't remember. I mean, I even had a failed print that I had a a box that I printed for an electronics project that. Um, yeah, it kind of slid off of the, the, the platform, then the whole thing was kind of skewed. I should have brought that as an example. Oh, yeah. um, <laughs> and then uh, recently here, we'll talk about this in a minute, but these these are those little 3DC19. These are the, um, the things that go on the back of the head to hold the straps for the masks. Um, I had some of these slide off of the printing bed, and then I woke up in the morning and there was a giant clump of PLA of the um, polylactic acid. So it happens. It's something that you have to tinker with. So it's not always just a push button and out comes a cool thing like in Star, Star Trek. So <laughs> exactly. There, we're, we're far from some, that. <laughs> yeah, there's some tinkering involved. So um, yeah, in fact, the kind of the, the way it all works, and I don't know if we'll have time for me to go down to my 3D printer in the basement, but when you start out with this filament, um, it's a little bit less than two millimeters thick and yeah, and then the, the printer basically takes this in, puts it onto a, an extruder head, and, and then melts it, and then it reforms, and it creates one level, and then it goes up, creates another level, and so forth. So depending on the complexity of design, you know, something like this, maybe it's pretty thin. It'll take maybe half an hour to print, something like that. Um, whereas if you have something that's a little more involved, like a this is a phone holder. You designed that too, right? Well, it, there was actually an existing design. And what I found the problem was you put a phone in here, the original design, this part was much lower. And so you put the phone in there and you couldn't get the charge cord in there. So I took this, the original design, and I basically stretched it. And, and so I'm gonna go next a little bit into how that process works, how you, how you actually design this. How does it get from a concept to uh, something that actually is physically here? So now let me back up a little bit to one of my own designs, which is one of the first. Um, and it's this red piece that you see in the middle here. And what this is, it's, um, I don't know if any of you are familiar with the RAM mount system for putting like GPSs or phones or whatever in your car, your motorcycle. So they have this dual ball mount system. And what I wanted to do is I had enough of the other parts and then I had this water bottle holder for my bike that I didn't need anymore. So I said, well, I want this on my handlebars. So I have the rest of the setup on my handlebars, but I couldn't get anything from this black piece to the water bottle holder. And I'm sure it's out there somewhere and I ram mount stuff isn't cheap. So I probably could have paid, I don't know, five, 10 bucks for it. I thought, well, there's got to be a way to do this. So what I did is I, this red piece is basically just a piece of uh, printed PLA with three holes in it. So let me switch to the screen and show you how that came to be. So this is my, my first actual just design from scratch. Okay. So the way this works is you have, and this is now a program called Tinkercad, which is free to use. Um, I created a free account with my Google account. And it gives you all these tools over here on the right-hand side. You can make boxes and cylinders and squiggles and all kinds of stuff. You can't do everything. It's definitely geared for, for tinkerers, but the basic designs are there. So what I did is I, I measured, I measured the, this, this piece, how long did it need to go from here to here and then the holes to match up from here to here. And so then um, I took, basically this bar, bar design, a, a rectangle, if you will, three-dimensional rectangle. Okay. And then I made it up with a cylinder. And then you can take these and kind of put them together, slide them into place. And then you can create another thing here that's a hole. So anything that you create, create as a solid object, you can also create it as a hole. So then this right here is a cylinder that's a hole and you put it into place. Now, of course, I had to measure it and it's got tools for alignment and all that stuff. So that's why I left three of these on the screen. So the next piece is these are the ones all together measured to the right dimensions. And some of these holes are actually more like ellipses to make absolutely sure that it would fit. 
And, and then what you can do is put all these things together. And you've probably done this if you've done any kind of work like in uh, any graphics programs, you could say, I'm gonna group these all together. And, and there it is, there's the other piece. So now you have a three-dimensional piece and you can check the dimensions. So if you click on any of these things, it'll show you up the dimensions, to show you the dimensions in, in millimeters. So I double checked it against my water bottle design. And then I took one of these and then with this, you can do an export. You can create something called an STL file, which then we take and this is where the Fab Lab comes in. So Chris and Daniel, we have a computer there that has a program called Cura 3D. Uh, it's also free to download. It's what's called a slicer. So now what it does, it takes this design and then creates it, um, slices it virtually so that, and then uh, you set the parameters. How thick do you want each layer to be? Um, do you want uh, a certain kind of infill? Um, does this have to be absolutely solid? And there are a bunch of parameters, and at first it seems overwhelming, but Chris and Daniel and some others kind of walk me through. So here's kind of what you need to do. Here are the temperatures you need for the nozzle, um, all this kind of thing. And then, so then you create um, another file called G-Code, and that goes into the 3D printer. And then you gonna, basically say, say go. You, you hit it, hit on the, my question. I was going to ask you, what was your experience? How intimidating was it? But you answered that. Like, well, at, at first <laughs> it was intimidating. So it's, uh, I always, well, how, how does this, how do I know this is going to work? Like what's the right layer height? And these are just yeah. experimental things. They're just like in any program, even like Microsoft Excel, there are so many levers and options and things and you overwhelmed at first, but after a while you find, well, these are the things that work. And then I had a couple of designs where it would curl off the bed. And, um, and then I found, you know, I needed to use a different temperature. And again, Chris was there, Daniel was there, um, the other Daves were there, and they were able to help me out and say, no, really on this particular printer, we've been having some problems or this particular PLA that we got from this manufacturer, you need to print that a little bit hotter. And people would even put stickers on the printers in the fab lab and say, hey, this one right now, you need to run it at 220 degrees Celsius and so forth. Hey, and then it worked and it came out and I was really pleased. I took a 28 mile bike ride the other day and I finally put this thing Jeez. together. And yeah, I got, got a water bottle on my, uh, on my handlebars. So that's, I was pretty geeked about that. So um, let me talk about the next thing. Um, uh, we talked about the Tesla um, design modifications, designs from scratch. Let me do one more. This is sort of relevant for the current situation. And this is a toilet paper winder. Everybody, this is why the episode's called Tesla's in Toilet Paper. There you go. So we went, we went to the uh, we went to the Tesla part. So what I found, I'm sure like a lot of you, went out to go buy toilet paper and couldn't get any. So, well, and part of the reason is people are hoarding, but the other reason is there's a uh, people are using more of the personal home style toilet paper versus the big rolls that you're gonna see in um, you know, restaurant bathrooms or colleges or whatever. And so it turns out that these big rolls are available. Uh, don't everybody surf the Amazon all at once. Yes, it's out there, but um, um, you know, if you keep clicking the same link, it's all gonna be sold out as well. But anyway, it's more available. So I thought, hey, that's kind of cool. Let me go design a thing that um, I can use to roll this thing up. And the first guy I saw doing this used a 30 millimeter deep socket wrench. Well, I don't have one of those because um, I don't work on tractors. So I said, just, just for fun, let me go out on Thingiverse, and that's the website I'm on here. Um, we'll give a link to that a little bit later. And sure enough, somebody had created a design that goes to roll up a toilet paper. Now, okay, so why am I mentioning this? If, um, what I found is when I looked at the dimensions of it, it didn't match up to what I wanted. Um, so, so you have your toilet paper roll and this piece has to go on the end of it. This piece has to go on the other end of it. And I found that the dimensions didn't match up with the toilet paper rolls that I had. So what I did is I took that design, downloaded it. Um, and this is all free. These are tinkers that make that stuff available, there's, there's no copyright issue typically, at least it's all explicit in Thingiverse. So what I did is I took that design and then I went to, um, uh, again, I went into uh, Tinkercad 
and whoops, wrong one. And grab the right tool here. So what I did is I added a cone and then a truncated cone. And what I did is I put that cone over top of the piece that was already there to then make it to the dimensions that I wanted. So if you look at it, this was the original design here. And then I just slid this piece over top of it, which this again was created from a cone sure. and a hole. And on, there you go. So it started out as a cone, then I put a cylinder in it, and then I put a hole in that. And that made that piece that I wanted. So using the tools that you have, you can do that. And similar thing on the other side, the original design, if you read the, the explanation, what they had done is they had this stubby little shaft here. The idea being that you would made it up to a skateboard bearing. Well, I don't have a skateboard bearing, so I thought, how can I do this? So I took another cylinder from Tinkercad and just added on top of there. And yeah, and then again, same process, exported it to an STL file, and here it is. So See, this, this is proof that Thingiverse is not just all baby Yodas, although it is that and more. <laughs> yeah. Well, and you know, you look at other stuff, you just look up COVID stuff and you, you see cool designs like this little door grabber, you know, and you can print this thing in about half an hour and you don't even have to modify it. The <laughs> idea is you can op open door handles, push stuff, and if, if you get really crafty, you can put a piece of aluminum foil over the end of it and use it on touch screens. Um, but let me just show here. So again, this, this is the final, final design or the final thing that I used for, uh, let me get it, for the toilet paper. And the way it works is you put this end piece in the one side of the toilet paper roll. You put the other piece in here. And then of course you take a piece of like painter's tape or something, put it on the giant roll and then you spin this thing and yeah, roll up your toilet paper. So problem solved. So when I run out of toilet paper, you're going to hook up a Fab Lab brother, right? Yeah, you know it. All right. I just so that was, some. yeah. So that was that piece. Um, let me make a mention here of the, um, the 3DC19. Um, so this is a group of people that are helping out making things like face shields. And uh, I think I mentioned these things before. This is a, this is a, we call these ear savers. The idea is that you loop onto uh, your face mask bands onto here. So instead of them going behind your ears and chafing, um, you can now put this thing on the back of your head, adjust it to the side that you need, and yeah, save your ears. And I don't, so, have, a, I don't have a picture of the, the face shields here, but. Yeah, so you, uh, uh, how do you, I forget exactly how you got involved with doing the 3D printing stuff. Did you see what, I was doing and then you yeah. all, then you acquired a 3D printer, right? Yeah, so I was using the ones in the fab lab. I'm walking out to my garage right now to show you the Tesla here in a minute. Um, but yeah, I figured, well, I don't really need to own one because hey, I've got all the ones at the fab lab. So, um, but then this little crisis hit and I didn't have access to the fab lab anymore and I was kind of bummed about that. So decided, Hey, I'm gonna go out and buy one. It so happened that a friend of mine had one available. I didn't even have to mail order it or something. So, and I just ended up buying what we had at the Five Lab because I was familiar with it, which is a, a Creality CR10. So I don't sponsor them or anything. It's just the ones I was comfortable with and I knew how to use it. And um, yeah, and they've Chris been, was they've been working pretty good. <laughs> What's that? They've been working pretty good at the Fab Lab. So yeah, and um, you know I had some questions about using different materials. Chris was there to support me again. So um, let me switch to forward view again here and show you the, the actual cup holder. Here we go. My love Muskegon sticker. Nice. Eventually right. I'll be able to uh, right. take a test drive in that sucker. All right. Door handle. All right. Here we go. All right. So there it is. So that's the, that's the cup holder. And you can kind of see, when I was first printing it, it happened to be purple filament. So I never really changed it. I could go back and paint it. I just haven't done that. 
So the idea is that there were multiple pieces in that design. When you download it, it downloads a zip file and you get them all together. So there's a piece that goes from here up to the, up to the front cup holder and then comes back, mates up. You do have to put something through here. There's a hole in the design. I just put like a cut off a paper clip or a twist tie or something like that in there. Yeah, and then it comes back and then you've got your, your cup holder cups. And again, the original ones didn't work out for me. So these are the ones that I ended up redesigning using Tinkercad. And you can kind of see how it's tapered there so that it doesn't, sure. um, fall, doesn't fall through. My, my first designs, I didn't make them big enough. So somebody had a water bottle in, the whole thing fell through. So, you know, you're going to make mistakes. You're going to screw some stuff up, but it's, it's all good. What's the, all right. So there's like that organization in those car commercials that's always rating cars. Yeah. Uh, JD Power. What's the JD Power rating on that the, from your users that have used it? On the, you mean the car or the cup holder? I'm the cup holder. I know the car okay. is fantastic. <laughs> um, well, like, yeah, the, the first one my kids had to suffer through that because they put a water bottle in and it kept falling through. And they're like, Dad, what's up with this? It's not working. So fortunately, they were sealed water bottles so it didn't spill all over. Um, sure. But then, yeah, then I recently took a trip with this car down to Austin, Texas, and I had two other, I had a YouTuber with me and some other folks. And um, yeah, they just used it. But to them, it was just, Part of the Normal. infrastructure like oh you got a cup holder it's all good right so let me show you one more progress if we got a little more time oh yeah we're good man um so one of the other projects that i know some of the other guys at the fab lab were um watching me make is so this is um let me back up a little bit this is a zero dsr which is an electric motorcycle and um so one of the things i want to do is take it touring at some point and i bought this this hard case but then the hard cases for the side are like stupid expensive. So I bought this set of nylon cases on, on eBay, but then the, 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 way you, the way you put them on there is with some straps and things like that. And the problem is they were getting kind of pulled in towards the wheel. And so what I did is the, I deliberately kept them red so you could see them. But these parts right here is something that I used Tinkercad to design. And then- to Go print. Tinkercad. So yeah, it's just Tinkercad. I mean, it's a pretty easy one. I mean, I'd like to move on to something else at some point, but for the basics, this works. So what this is, it's um, a PLA. Um, it's PLA right now. Um, so right now, these are just PLA while I'm testing them. I'm kind of a fair weather rider. I haven't had them out in the rain. But so far, I mean, these things are pretty, they're springy, but, but they're solid enough that they stay in place. So there's, there's the piece that comes up that mounts to the frame. There's a backing piece. That's kind of hard to see. Uh, okay, backlit. But then I even countersunk holes for hex head screws. Okay, and, and then there's another piece that runs up to the frame that's kind of hard to see from the back. But here's the one. Oh, yeah, here, now you can see the backing piece. And that one, yeah, it happened to be orange filament the day that I did it and just never changed. I always figured, well, this is still a prototype. And I did go through quite a few of... Um, uh, prototypes, but you know, ultimately I stuck with this one and it's been working. Um, I, it works. You're like, why take it apart? Yeah. And I stress tested it the other day. I, I bought a five pound bag of flour and it's the side bag and it didn't sag. So PLA is yeah. pretty strong it would it for yep. just being a cheap, easy to um, plastic. So then, and then the next piece that I'm, yeah. So my next little project was um, is the the windshield on this thing. The fit a little bit poor. That's how easy it is to see. It's backlit again, but it's mounted on these ball joints. So, um, and the problem is they're really just in there with set screws. So when you get um, when you get wind pressure pulling back on it, the whole thing wants to tip back. So my idea was some kind of mounting system on the front. So what I ended up doing, and again, this is just in the prototype stage right now, is something that goes on to the turn signal stock and then mates up with another piece. This black piece is another one that I printed, screwed together. There's a piece of foam rubber under here and goes to the other side. And I've had this thing out for about three rides now. I still want to take it up to highway speeds to make sure it actually works. And then 
probably start thinking about some different materials other than PLA. So, yeah, um, pretty soon, man, your motorcycle is going to be more 3D printed plastic than anything else. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? So, um, I saw a question. I can pull up the design if we want, but it almost looks like a, a connecting rod, if you will. So, there's a piece that goes. I basically used a circle and and then I used some um, X or, um, rectangular pieces here, same thing on the other side, and then used a, a hole function that, again, the, the empty cylinder, and then I used a taper going to this, and then same thing with the front. It was all done with Tinkercad. I have to say, you know, it's, it's pretty amazing. It's a little bit tedious, but it, you can do it. Sure. That's pretty good, man. That's like a... Your poster child for Tinkercad in industry. <laughs> you know, when you just need something quick and dirty, right? You're just, you're tinkering. You're figuring it out. So yep. there's some chat going on about FreeCAD um, and things like that. I know we've done some on shape, right, at the lab. Right. Um, yep. It's pretty impressive that this is just Tinkercad as well, though. Yep. So uh, does anybody know anything about FreeCAD? Yeah, I have used it a little bit, but Patrick, he's pretty good at it. Um, that it's Patrick Ryan who commented that FreeCAD's a downloadable CAD software. Um, it's pretty good, but yeah, that for uh, other free resources, you have Autodesk Fusion 360, you have Onshape, there's like SCAD, which is like a mathematical formula based CAD. Um, gosh, there's probably more too. I just can't think of anything else right now. So, yeah, we got some options for you to upgrade to, Carl. That's for sure. Yeah. No, and I, I want to learn. That's part of the process. But since somebody asked, um, <laughs> this this is actually the, the design for that for that piece. And then I ended up I put a gap in between, and then um, you know printed it in um, basically eliminated one in the print, and then the other, and then printed them as two separate pieces. But yeah, it's pretty amazing what you can do. Um, there's even the hole, and that printed reasonably well. There's some other things you have to learn that because of the way 3D printing works, it, it obviously goes in layers on top of layers underneath. So you can't print on top of air. So it's really important how you, um, in which direction that you, you print, you know. So for example, the, the, the original design on this one on the, on the Tesla cup holder, if you notice the way that um, that piece is originally designed from the, orig from the, the person that designed it, it will never print this way. Right, because what's going to end up happening is you you can't print on top of air. It'll, it'll start printing here, and then it'll start making spaghetti down here. So what you have to learn, and that's one of the things that the, the slicer program can do for you, is is you can or you can do do it with the slicer program is turn the whole thing on its head, which is really the way um, the way it's intended. So oh yeah, supports. It's you can't live with them. You can't live without them. I tell you what. <laughs> optimizing designs for supportless printing is an art form in itself. Yeah. So um, that's really it from my side. Um, sure. Maybe a couple more uh, just quick things. Um, I'm sure you don't all know to get to the Fab Lab. You can just Google Lakeshore Fab Lab, but there's the web link. Um, there's Tinkercad. It's just tinkercad.com. You can create a free account. You can use your Google account if you have one. Um, there's Thingiverse. You don't have to join that to get any of the downloadable designs, but if you want to make comments or upload your own and things like that, then you're going to want to make a free account. And if anybody wants that toilet paper roller thing, it's the, the, the design is 4237382. Um, and then we didn't talk too much more about the, the 3DC19, but that's a group of uh, tinkerers uh, that are uh, that are trying to help out with the COVID-19 supplies. So face shields, those ear savers, um, who knows what's coming next, but what, it's kind of neat because it's distributed manufacturing. So, um, you know, just in the last couple of days here, I've made, I've already dropped off like 200 of these things and here are 30 more that are ready to go. Actually, Looks I've like I'll have 40. to make a trip to uh, Boomtown, huh? <laughs> yeah, and actually I've got, I've got 10 more sitting down on my printer. So, yeah, it's kind of cool to be able to make uh, make a difference, help out. So whenever we see the stories on that group about which which uh, entities have gotten 
uh, the benefits of those, it, it feels good to be able to help out. So, it does. There's, Chris, <laughs> there's Chris's email, lakeshorefablab at muskegoncc.edu. And if anybody wants to talk to me about any of my designs, um, carl.bloss at gmail. So, yeah, that's about it. Sweet. But having so, a blast with this, and I can't say enough good stuff about the Fab Lab. And they don't pay me, I pay them. Um, so uh, it's just been really fun to learn how to do all these things. Um, I'm not sure, I've just scratched the surface. Uh, I've done a little bit of metal plasma cutting um, with the other Chris. And um, yeah, I haven't even gotten into the wood router, into the, um, uh, the other machining aspect. So, and it's, it's really, it's kind of a neat community. So I would, just think I would where like you're going to be at once you learn those other machines, man, you'll be making your own motorcycle from scratch. <laughs> <laughs> well, there are um, a lot of smart people that, that are already doing that, but yeah, if I can make no. it just a little better. That's cool. No, man, that's awesome. And what you said about like the unique community about this place, like we probably, you know, the people we've interacted with via the fab lab would have probably never met in person. You know, I would have probably never met Daniel. I would have never known that he does has goat yoga at his house. Like you just meet a lot of cool people like that. And a lot of them are actually involved in this 3d C 19 project because you know, the fab Lab's a place that just brings community together. It brings all these like powerful minds and different people together in a unique space. Mm -hmm. So, and then we, I mean, there are other things that just come in that have, um, that are related like Cole, um, uh, another guy that's there. He, he brought in his, um, uh, virtual reality is VR. Oh, yeah. Let people try. And because of that, I learned more about that. And um, my son now got into got into VR. So it's always all all about the connections and the people that you meet and things like that. So, so oh, go yeah. ahead. Look, you got the site up there. Yeah, I was just going to show people. And I, this site, I feel like it changes every day. <laughs> but yeah, this is what Carl was printing those ear savers for. Um, and you were printing visors for a little while too, right? Before we yep. switch over to mm -hmm. ear savers. Yeah. So yeah. there's like 400 and some people in this thing. And this all started from just groups of people like me and Carl getting together and wanting to have a fight, you know, uh, a fighting chance to give back for this whole thing. Cause sitting at home, you just feel powerless, right? Like, yeah. So we have 439 printers right now. Um, one of those is yours, Carl. <laughs> if yep. you're on there, yep. <laughs> um, all these agencies helped just, it's phenomenal. All these people coming together and some success stories of people like Degage Ministries actually wearing our um, face shields and whatnot. And yeah. So I guess let's I'll close that off. Any, nobody has any questions, I guess most, I think, I think this is good. Uh, I love to, uh, Love to hear uh, all this. I didn't know. I didn't know you had done so much <laughs> in ticker yeah, Chris, cat for the motorcycle. Yeah, I think uh, what uh, Chris, um, you know, I posted some stuff. We we connected on Facebook, and Chris had printed a um, what is it? A picnic table for squirrels, right? Oh gosh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, and then um, you know, I had printed this thing with the toilet paper, and he says, you know what? Maybe um, maybe I need to refocus my energy on some other st actual useful stuff. So, but it's all good. I mean, we've all printed our our Yodas and whatnot. So now I have to show off the ticker. Now I have to show off the uh, squirrel bench. Also, squirrel update: Sammy the squirrel is a boy. Come to find out, and he is at a wildlife rehab center in Grand Rapids, and they're taking good care of her or him. <laughs> I was kidding about the Yodas. You actually have one. <laughs> <laughs> that was a Tinkercad design I found, and I, I uh, saved it. So, yeah, this is a, a very practical use for Tinkercad and designing, uh, making squirrel benches. You know, this is what we do in quarantine life. Um, yeah. <laughs> I already had people wanting to buy these and mail, have me mail these to them. <laughs> Yeah, so it's all yeah. good. We we kind of feed off each other. You get ideas like that toilet paper thing, um, you know the the door handle uh, gizmo, just the motorcycle thing. Actually, I posted the motorcycle thing on one of my zero motorcycle forums, and a guy approached me and says, "Dude, you need to print one of those for me. I need that." 
turns out he had a slightly different one, so I had to modify the design a little bit. Sure. So he's testing it out now. So yeah, it's it's pretty pretty invigorating. We can help other people out. I know your next aim is to probably do more uh, parametric CAD, like using FreeCAD or Fusion or Onshape. But do you have any projects that you're working on, or you want to do in Tinkercad, or any items um, you want to 3D print that you found on Thingiverse? Um, I don't think I have anything right now. I've, I've pretty much exhausted that list right now. So the, I mean, the last thing was my, my wife wanted a, um, a phone stand. And the one thing that I found is, I, so I took the original design. And again, I think I mentioned I, I raised it. And then the other thing I found is this thing is too springy. So I created a new design that has an upright. Um, and what I thought was, gee, if I wanted to design this thing from scratch, I don't think Tinkercad has the ability to let me do these kind of round corners and things like that. And that's when I started thinking, I think I need to learn a new tool. And, and I'm, so I'm up for, I'm open to suggestions for what to go with next. I've seen Fusion 360. Um, the other one that you mentioned, I downloaded it, or it was a web-based thing and I, I struggle with it, but hey, I'm willing to learn. So maybe that's something in the future when the Fab Labs open up again, we could, do like a little survey course of all the different tools. So that's our next, uh, our next goal for the Fab Lab, a little hint for everybody else, is this is kind of our kickoff for online learning, you know, because everything's going digital now. So the plan in the future is to have like an on-shape course via Zoom or something like this. Um, yeah, so stay tuned. But good. I guess that's it. I don't have any other comments. Holly, did you have anything to say? Dave Stradell, you have anything to say? Nothing? All right. That's a rap, people. I didn't I didn't cue up any uh, rap music, like walk off the stage music, so how <laughs> <I'll> come? <laughs> well, I have a question before you leave. Yeah. I mean, so we've got a, quite a few people here, and I know that um, some of these folks we know. Uh, that design, but I mean, I guess I was kind of curious as to what people's interest was in coming to watch. Is it because they also design in CAD? They also 3D print? They just know you and think you're cool, Chris or Carl? I don't know. Why did everybody uh, check in? Or was it the clever Teslas in toilet paper name? <laughs> I mean, right? Because Chris is cool. One, I just though. wanted to see uh, Chris uh, stumble a little bit. What's up, Paul? I'm kidding, Chris. How you doing, Chris? Speaking of uh, that bird nest, yeah, I was going to take a picture of the one that I have. I had a nasty one, like he said, running all night, and I woke up. Uh, it was ugly. Oh, and to answer your question, yeah, I'm a designer by trade, and then Chris got me into 3B, 3D printing when we worked together, so that was, that was good. Uh, I'm like the additive manufacturing dealer in West Michigan. I was going to say, <laughs> it's a slippery slope. Yeah, now I have two of them. I'm looking at a third, although my wife just heard me say that. I shouldn't have said that out loud. You just have to tell her it's to print PPE to save first responders. <laughs> that's right. For, that's exactly. See, it would have paid off for itself if I had another one. Well, I'm excited for the Fab Lab to open back up so that we can do things like what Holly was suggesting, like, um, I'm probably not allowed to say this, but like, you know, uh, laser print stuff on sugar cookies or, uh, or making, um, you know, gingerbread houses and stuff like that. You have been that. baking a lot, so. Yeah, I know. <laughs> we do really miss the laser, don't we guys? Yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, that's, a little, that's a little pricey to, to stick in your house. <laughs> I know, it's why we need the Fab Lab back open, guys. All right, I look, here we go in chat. Are you guys reading chat? We have Luciano, who's an industrial designer. Oh yeah, I know uh, Luciano. Oh, okay. I don't know Luciano, so. I think You're so. You're gonna learn a lot more about CAD and 3D printing if you come to the Tech Talks, so. Uh, okay, so I think one fun thing to do would be to uh, put your picture, you know how you can um, re, do your picture for zoom we could put our fails up there so if you've got a really gnarly nest from a terrible print you could make your image a real bad fail that would be fun <laughs> just saying not to toot my own horn but i don't have many <laughs> <laughs>
Uh, Just no. kidding. I'm down I to like them, I, two yeah, printers out of like good. seven right now because of issues. But yeah, we'll have to deal with like the, the, the spammer thing that happened with this. So I don't know. I didn't hear exactly if anything bad happened, but it sounded like weird music and stuff. But I guess that's all I got. Well, Chris, it looks like you're open to talk about some more COVID response stuff if you're interested, because I mean, you've done a ton there. So if you want to talk about your injection mold things, how that uh, developed and then, you know. Yeah, I guess so. Um, so with <laughs> the Fab Lab being closed and, you know, all this going on at the beginning, I needed to like direct my energy towards something. So, you know, I was 3D printing stuff. And anyway, so this like, and this 3DC19 group formed, and it was like the merging of like three different groups, uh, Howling Grand Rapids and Muskegon kind of thing. And we to get to get uh, more of these face shields made, we had plastic injection mold tooling. Uh, the part was optimized for plastic injection mold, actually by another Fab Lab uh, member volunteer, Eric Peterson. Uh, just goes to show you how this kind of community can react to something like this, like a crisis. And so he helped us optimize the design for injection molding. And another contact that I have for the fab, via the Fab Lab, um, nobody directly like a volunteer or anything, Jason Murphy, he's in Grand Rapids, but I had reached out to him because he does metal 3D printing uh, about a year or two ago. And he sourced the mold, $15,000 mold, basically donated by a place called Concept Molds. And that was like a week we had a mold and it was shooting parts. Like I was just ready at laying out the timeline today. It was like seven to nine days basically from when we said, all right, we're getting a mold boom to we have a mold in our possession to make parts. So yeah, that's pretty crazy. And right now we're looking at making a mold for the ear savers that Carl showed uh, because spectrum health wants like a hundred thousand to start in two months. So, and they're willing to uh, pay to have the, the mold made because I don't think we can get another free mold. Um, yeah, so. So I don't know if you can see it, but I, I splashed up on the screen the, um, uh, the, the Verkstan oh, yeah. um, there you frame. Go. So this is on, this is straight off the 3D C19 page. There's a, a printer support uh, pull down menu right on the main page. And um, so this is one of the designs. This is the, one of the original designs, which now, we, um, that's the one that's being injection molded. But when we first got started, this is what we were cranking out, um, you know, by the thousands. Um, so, but you know, once, once I think the group realized that how many we needed, it was worthwhile to make an injection mold. Cause once you have that made the upfront expense and time to make it is significant, but then you can crank out pieces in seconds or at least minutes. So, but there are still other designs and other, other things that are, that can be made. So I think this is a great resource. So uh, I'm always looking to see, um, you know, once you once you subscribe to this and uh, as one of the printers, you'll get some email blasts that telling you, hey guys, let's work on this or even, um, you know, okay, it's fine to crank these things out, make, make sure you focus on quality just a little bit. Um, and so that's very helpful to know what is the right thing for us to do because all of us together can have way more impact than any one of us. Yeah, for sure. Uh, yeah, Patrick, I'd love to have you share what, share your screen. Let, I'm going to share real quick to show the, show the, from, from the 3D Verkstan 3D printing model to the 3D CAD model for injection molding. So this, before we even had tooling it, in line, I, Eric Peterson just happened to reach out to me from the, my MCC email saying, what can I do to help? This is before anybody knew that things like a group was forming. I said, uh, I'm making this, we're 3D printing this right now. Uh, we don't know, like we didn't know where to get even the face shield part, but we're making these in quantity. We're figuring out where to get the plastic. Can you take this STL and convert it to a CAD file? So this is that initial file. Because the STL files are different from, different from um, CAD. They're not usable really other than 3D printing and some uh, mesh modeling software. So yeah, we had a CAD that, a CAD file that we could edit. 
Um, then we transitioned to a optimized for plastic injection mold part. There, there's been a couple mini inter, uh, revisions in between. I think there's like six total. So this is only like half of them. So we increased the space between the forehead and we added uh, a lip here for increased forehead contact because that was recommended by some ER nurses that were testing out the original 3D printing one. We figured, hey, we're making a mold. We can make this thing optimized for how we want. So you can see for injection molding, you have to do a lot of uh, contours, can't have any flat edges basically, and everything kind of has to be at, a, at an angle chamfer. And we thinned it up a lot so that we could have part-time be really quick. You know, and this was made out of polypropylene and it's all one solid piece. So we don't necessarily have to worry about it being too thin and breaking. It's a, it was polypropylene with talcum, I believe, with, I believe so it's a little stronger well anyway so this is our uh one that part that's being made right now um the plastic injection mold version it's being made by Jim D Plastics so yeah just kind of a cool comparison to show you the the evolution of the design and it was so nerve-wracking because we were gonna basically the mold cutter was gonna start making this design and we hadn't got it tested by anybody like out in the field. And I was so like, oh my God, like we just, I, I was, we we're trying to get them in hands of some people so that we could get feedback. But ultimately we just said, all right, we have to go. We want to get this mold here in a week. We got to do it. And it's worked out pretty good. So, um, all right, Patrick, let me see. I don't need uh, to show my screen. I can show oh, okay. you in camera. So, so I mean, I've been mainly working on uh, actually ventilator um, design stuff. Um, so, and so, laptop, but it's actually a manometer, so it can uh, monitor, uh, measure uh, pressure really, really easily. Um, now, I've got, I can do that. With microcontroller as well, um, but this is, is something that's going to be, so what I'm doing is I'm basically designing to the minimum technology needed um, and then stepping it up. Uh, basically, okay, let's, let, let's first build something that someone can make um, out of mostly a hardware store and a 3D printer. So you need a respirator, just take a vacuum filter and print the base for it be able to use literally a, a blower for a, for a uh, uh, what's it called, inflatable bed. Oh, um, yeah. With a, with, a, uh, with a little bike controller. I mean, I'm going to be mostly using uh, Arduino control, but I'm trying to design it as easy to build as possible. Um, now, that respirator works. It's actually on... Um, on Hackaday, uh, but I've actually been mainly working on uh, chest plate for ECB. So that pulls your chest out instead of uh, instead of forcing air down your lungs. Uh, one of the main issues with traditional ventilators is they uh, they will you get enough air, enough pressure on your lungs to actually expand your lungs from the inside with the, the dunk and the issues that people are, ha um, are having associated with COVID, um, you end up bursting some of those cells. Uh, so if you can pull the chest out instead of pushing it out, um, then you can have less internal pressure um, and be able to, be able to uh, keep people that would, um, would be succumbing because a lot of the cells that could be uh, interacting with oxygen, can't because they're dead, um, can. Um, so, I mean, I've been simplifying it actually just actually got to see that way I can not have a huge print for the respirator. Um, and uh, there are a few designs online for um, uh, to masks for uh, uh, snorkels. Now, uh, I I think those might be fine for the hospital use that they're they're looking for, um, but my main issue 
there's already the valves to be able to have an exhale and have an inhale. So you don't have to worry about uh, the main issue with having uh, exhale and inhale in the same tube is you have to make sure that, that you're not having carbon dioxide um, coming back through because that's a lot of the issue with the with the uh, actually Dr. Dave so Dave, Dave Dietrich in the chat he's a he's a retired physician and he said it sounds a lot like the iron lung that was used in treating polio and from my conversation with you Patrick that was your goal right <laughs> Well, it's, it's, it's actually, of, this is a combination of looking at the um, designs, literally designs, it's called, there's a design called the wooden lung. Um, that was actually, that uses a, um, a, 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 a simple manometer. Um, and it uses uh, basically just physical timing and valves. Uh, and it was used for 12 hours on a patient. Uh, and they got another one in, but it was, it was useful. Um, and the designs of a of an actual um, like specifications of a real like there are BCB chest plates like that's why that's where that um, frames come, uh, that word comes from BCB so uh, bi bifastic um, cuirass ventilation so that's that's from um, it's a group called Hayton. now they use a bit more of a they use a really like kind of organic shape now I can I can print that but that's not something that someone can um easily cut with a uh, with a razor blade out of out of foam to um so that anyone can build it that's that's the kind of the, the stress between because i mean that design you can either you could 3d print it, it would take a long time um or you can cut it out of foam or you can laser cut it that's that's kind of the pressure of like okay how do you make something that is as easy to build as possible but useful no, that's a great, that's awesome, man. And there's a, there's a nonprofit that kind of has what you're trying to do. Uh, they usually aim it toward, they, they're usually aimed towards like disaster relief in third world countries like Haiti, Dominican Republic, Africa. It's called Field Ready, fieldready.org, I think is the website, but that's what they try to focus on. They do use 3D printing and lasers and stuff like that, but they try to use mm -hmm. what's readily available to solve the problems that these people have. Um, medically or agriculturally, anything like that. So it's pretty cool, man. You, you're using the uh, <laughs> using what's around you to kind of come up with solutions. That's awesome. Glad to have you on there, Patrick. All right, we will probably wrap that up then. Um, I guess that's all. Thanks, guys, for tuning in to the episode one. Thank you for anybody that is was uh asking questions or thank you to patrick for presenting and obviously guest of the hour carl bloss we'll check in with him to see what he's up to in the future because obviously he's going to be doing more cool stuff and yeah just everybody stay distant stay safe and we'll see you guys in a couple weeks yeah, thanks for tuning in take care thanks everybody